What's up everybody, Dre back at it again with another video on Crown Branch because they just came out with another Intel report. This one is Intel report number 16. More news on version 1034. Ooh. It starts off with saying, greetings tactical realism aficionados. We're a week into July and it's about time we put out a new Intel report for you with fresh dev news and more sneak peeks for upcoming release version 1034 of Ground Branch. Okay, let's see what they got. Going prone and more animation work. Ooh, finally they're talking about prone. Hell yeah. One of version 1034's most notable features will be the first iteration of the highly anticipated prone stance, in which characters drop to the ground on their stomachs and move around by crawling. Lead programmer Chris and animator Mike has spent a lot of time and effort navigating the considerable complexities of Ground Branch's true first person system, and the prone system is now ready for a little showcasing. The media below is a very much work in progress first pass, but here are a few shots straight from Chris. And we got our first picture here of the prone. Oh my goodness, look at that. You got the crawl right here. You got the shooting while he's on the ground. You got even more crawling. Yes, yes, yes. This is perfect for the big maps. This is exactly what we needed. I would like to see what it looks like on an incline, though. Like if the body is on like a hill and he has to like shoot over. I hope they did something with that, too. But yeah, cool. And then we have a video of this. What is this? And here are some quick and dirty captures of one of the pistol reload animations while prone. Ooh, let's take a look. That looked pretty cool. It looked like he had to like lift himself up so he could pull out the mag from his chest rig. Pretty cool. Then they have another video right here that shows the third person view of what he did here. Let's take a look. Ooh. So yeah, he did have to like lift himself up right here so he could grab his mag. It's pretty dope. I like it a lot. Moving on here. The prone stance will offer the lowest profile, making you harder to spot and a smaller target in most situations, while also boosting weapon accuracy by providing the most stable of the three basic shooting stances, standing and crouch being the other two. Here's a result of Mike sacrificing his IRL knees in the name of... Uh, Science hardcore vidya during the last month's mocap session. Oh my god, he actually got on his hands and knees. What a freaking rebel! Let's take a look at this. Ooh, so clean, so fresh, so clean. God damn, look at that. Looks so good. Now we have the third person view. I like how they're actually using mocap now. This is so cool. And I think the running animation looks a lot better too. Look at this. Oh, his knees. Ouch. Uh, uh, uh. Oh man, that's looking better. So much better. God damn. But anyways, though it comes with a stealth and accuracy bonus, prone is also the slowest stance, not just to move around, but also to perform actions such as reloading, changing weapons and equipment, and looking aiming around. For reference, the prone pistol reloads are roughly one second slower than the standing crouch variant, which makes sense. I mean, you have to like reach for your magazines underneath your body. So yeah, that definitely makes sense. More upgrades to come to the animations will include include equipping and stowing additional primary weapons on and off the character's back. Oh my god, are we going to actually be able to see the gun go onto his back? Because as it stands right now, uh, I don't think the gun goes on the back. I'm pretty sure it doesn't do that. But they actually have a video of what it would look like if it does. So let's take a look. Once again, no sound. Oh, that looks so cool. Now, if only we could have like a sling, you know, just see the sling. Or attach it, don't attach it. Gotta, maybe I'm asking too much of the game. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, developers. I didn't mean that. You don't have to if you don't want to. But anyways, moving on here. New map on the way. We're not disclosing too much at this time, but John has a smaller map project going on called Hideout. Here are some sneak peeks. You know, that's one thing about this game. I feel like there's not enough, like, you know, close quarter maps. I feel like they have a bunch of massive maps, and I think that they should definitely cut pieces of those maps to make just smaller maps so that we could play around in. Because those are some massive maps. I would love to have at least three small maps in those big maps. You know what I'm saying? This game is just looking gorgeous every day. This kind of looks like a house that's already been featured in um, that big map. Depot, I think it's called? It's a really big foresty map. I forget what it's called. Got another picture here. I don't even know what you call this. A Jeep? It might be the Russian version of a Jeep. Not too sure, but pretty cool. Very foresty map. It's a smaller one, apparently. A lot of pipes. Big truck right there on the right. Pretty dope, pretty dope. Underneath this, it says, Any ideas about the possible setting or theme? Drop them in the comments. 
Well, it's in a forest, I know that. But vehicles look kind of foreign from American vehicles. I could be wrong, not too sure. It's definitely a building on the right, but I don't know what this area is. I, I would say it's like a, someplace in the woods, but I can't pinpoint it to be honest. But anyways, chasing that quality of life. In each update, we try to include some quality of life changes to make your gaming life a little easier, often based on community feedback. When it comes to mission setup, we have two new features coming to version 1034. So far, objective and insertion randomization. In game mode, with randomized insertion extraction points search areas hotspots etc you can now click the i'm not sure what button that is on the ops port to re-roll them oh cool don't like the choice of hotspot in your terrorist hunt game or the search areas and in intel retrieval not a fan of the team elimination spawns or for the next round just click the button on the ops board either in lone wolf or as a server admin and see if you like the new pigs better that's pretty cool and they have another one here special role volunteering feeling like you become a hostage way too often Ugh. Do you want to place the flag in detach but never get the chance? We feel your pain. That's why we're introducing a volunteer button. Oh, to the roster menu. Simply click the button and you'll be volunteering for any special role associated with the game mode. Only volunteers will be considered for the special role if no player volunteers. Then the role is picked at random like before. Though in all cases, game modes will always try not to pick the same player in a row. Well, that's definitely helpful. I remember playing with, uh, I think it was Swish Actual on Hostage Rescue and he was trying to be the hostage for like the longest time but he never got it so this is definitely helpful another thing that they're adding is color blindness support a quality of life update of a slightly different kind is provided by a couple of new advanced video options we have received reports that the default red reticle red laser dots and the red search area and hotspot markers are very hard to see for people with color blindness especially in the case of oh that's a word gertrinopia which affects about six percent of men in response, we're implementing two different schemes to try to assist people with color blindness of different types and other visual impairments, hopefully. Oh, well, that's nice of them. Thinking about that kind of stuff. They have like the setting right here that we can look at color blindness mode. I still don't know how to say that word. Color blindness mode intensity by this much. Replace key reds with magenta. Color to use in place of red for reticles and objective markers. Apply a color blindness mode may change this color in any event. Interesting. Firstly, it is not possible to change the color of reticles laser and search hotspot markers to one of a range of different colors that different types of severities of color blindness may be more sensitive to and thus have an easier time seeing secondly we have implemented a number of different extreme lookup tables to attempt to correct colors into the palette that is more visible for people with different types of color blindness this may also shift the default red color of reticles lasers and so on we hope that these measures provide at least some alleviation and or aid for people with different types of visual impairment we will of course keep an open mind as to other measures we could put in assist with visual impairments and we welcome your feedback composition below shows the color correction schemes that are possible and we have a picture of all of this. Oh, oh my god, look at all these freaking words I can't say. I guess these are all impairments that I've never heard of. But anyways, speaking of quality of life, we have managed to fix two very special bugs that you have no doubt grown to know and love. Being unable to set the enemy AI count expected resistance on the ops board. Oh my god, thank you. Moving options sliders, adding one to the number that you wanted. Oh, sorry we let those slip through everyone. Hey, it's no problem as long as you're working on the game. I have no issues. Moving on to the next thing here. Helmet can. Ooh! Head and body cams are all the rage these days. And since we always wanted to make a spectator mode camera, we're going ahead and adding a spectator helmet cam perspective in version 1034. That is awesome. It may or may not eventually replace the regular first person spectator cam, depending on the feedback and practical implications. Here's programmer Fat Moral testing his creation on the farm shoot house. Uh, before I watch this, I just want to say if you can just add in that camera, but keep the other ones, you know, because as a creator, I like to see a lot of things for different angles just keep it you know but let's go ahead and take a look at this video here let's take a look is this the helmet cam oh that's the helmet cam oh that's dope i thought this was a mod it's gonna be in game that's freaking awesome Oh man, if they had like a theater mode where you could like watch your previous recordings. Oh man, game set match. 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, 
that is cool. Remember, switching to your sidearm is faster than reloading. Oh, you didn't see the bad guy, bro? Bro! <laughs> Gotta check your corners, my man. So you got back out of that mode. Is it going to show the... Oh, did it show the body cam? That's fine. All right, well, that was cool. Thank you, Fat Moro, for the very cool video. Moving on to the next thing here, we got Radio Pouch in version 1034. We're finally adding a Radio Pouch to all VESS platforms. VoIP Radio is a default feature in regular play, so the Radio Pouch is a fixed, non-removable item. The former aspect isn't necessarily set in stone. And here we got the radio here. Uh, it would be cool if the radio switched around, spe like, to specific places if um, you're not wearing a vest, like, you decide to just go shirt and pants like maybe put it on his belt or something battle belt that'd be cool but i like this a lot it actually gives more realism because you know you're kind of just talking by yourself into like a mic but the mic isn't actually attached to anything so this is that cool can somebody tell me what type of radio this is all right moving on it's a small cosmetic update but it adds some flavor to the setups yeah that it does moving on here we got grenade effects continue to be iterated on and vfx artist charles got a nice spot with the frags notice how the version below even has some small flying debris bouncing off the ground so is this showing like both versions let's see Ooh, that's cool I like the details. That is cool. It would be crazy if it could actually leave an impact on the ground, just like a straight divot or something. But I don't know how much, you know, they want to go with that. That's pretty cool. But they even have that right there. But anyways, moving on. Expanding mod support. Cal, one of our programmers, has been making good progress on Ground Branch's SDK and Steam Workshop integration. He's already got a functioning test mod into Steam Workshop, and servers and clients will soon be able to download mod updates automatically from the workshop. We are planning to stagger the development of the SDK so as not to delay updates. Version 1034 should see the addition of weapon mods, while maps and other kinds of modding will follow in later releases. This should be exciting news to all modders and modding enthusiasts out there who have been having to hack their mods into Ground Branch for a while now. Yeah, mods have been in Ground Branch for a while. It's just there hasn't been like an official thing. I've definitely seen a lot of mods though, for sure, especially from Fat Morrow, which I didn't even know he was on the team at this point, but I, I guess he is now. But anyways, that's it for this month's Intel report. You made it this far. Give yourself a pat on the back and know that we do have favorites. Ooh. And that was it for ground branches intel report a lot of stuff here a lot of good stuff i love the prone animations they look really good can't wait to see what they look like i would love to see what the animations would look like on an incline like if they're on a hill because i've seen in a lot of games where they kind of mess up is when the prone is on like a hill and he doesn't really like lay on the ground he kind of just like lays on top with like the leg sticking up in the air i hope they think about that but yeah, pretty damn awesome. I can't wait. And uh, yeah, thank you all for coming out to watch. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.